All right, so in this, this video, I'm going to introduce a robot simulator that I wrote um, to teach robotics to a class that um, has only a moderate amount of programming experience, has no engineering experience. And so the sorts of robot simulators that I considered, um, I went through a number of them to see what might fit my needs, and I found that none of them really fit my needs. So let me outline first what my needs were or are, and then why I felt it necessary to build a robot simulator um, myself, and then how you know how I want to, to, to proceed. So basically, I want something that can run in Python because that's what we use for the class, preferably Jupyter um, because that's what we also use for a class. It needs to be cross-platform. It needs to be able to run in Windows and Mac and have as few dependencies as possible. So it, so it can't have really complex um, inst installation steps. It has to be easy to install and it, it can't require a ton of compiling or um, or other dependencies. So that's the and that rules out a lot of things. Like the most popular one might be uh, Gazebo, which is very hard to install on Windows and to get things working. It's also like really technical. So I wanted it to be you know, easy to install, but I also wanted it to be flexible. I didn't want just one kind of robot. So I didn't want to have a, a simulator that just had a robot arm and you program that, or just a um, robot that just moved around like a Roomba or something like that. I wanted something that was flexible and I wanted design to be part of the process. So I didn't want just prepackaged designs. And so these are things that um, you know, I was looking at and there were and there were a few like WeBots, for example, looks really promising. I had a hard time getting Python to work with it um, because it uses the framework for um, the, that's on the computer itself. And I use Anaconda because I want to do you know, scientific programming. And so these sorts of kind of needling sorts of technical bugs I wanted to avoid. Um, and I wanted to have something that was not overly technical or syntax heavy. So I wanted to keep the concepts down to uh, as bare, bare minimum as possible. So these were kind of all my dependencies and I, and I couldn't find one that worked exactly. And so um, things that I don't need, I don't need it to be like super optimal. Um, I decided to go with two dimensions rather than three because I didn't see any, I didn't see much kind of educational benefit in going three dimensions. It made things run more slow it was harder to run on, on, on older computers, made it more technical, but not with anything that um, kind of added to the kind of educational value of it. So, um, so I went kind of with, 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 with two dimensions and so on. So, so this was my um, kind of thought process. And in this, um, in this tutorial, this video, I'm going to kind of show the, the installation and kind of the introduction to this robot simulator. Um, and then in subsequent videos, I'm going to show about um, different ways of organizing kind of the robot behavior so that to make it kind of make it easier. And then maybe in, in, in other videos, I might make ones for how to build more complex structures or things like that. Um, so let me go here. This is my uh, um, uh, installation for the um, for the robot simulator, and and it depends on uh, Box Two D, um, and then it's just the robot simulation that I have on a GitHub site. So those are the only installation steps that you need to do. Uh, right now I have it using Jupyter Lab, so I use it for, uh, or Jupyter Notebooks, I use it with um, an Anaconda uh, distribution. So if you install Anaconda, then do this, th th that should be, that should be, uh, um, that should work. Okay, um, it also, and I've designed it specifically for this, uses the matplotlib interface for the animations. And I recognize this is not optimal, but it is really easy. And, and, so, the, um, and, and so this makes it a lot easier to kind of work with and debug and, and things like that. Uh, so, that so, so, so we have, um, we have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk through um, this and then what, once you get the installation done, then the, the then the, the rest of it is essentially the tutorial on on the uh, uh, robot simulator itself. So let me go to here, and so the first is, so so 
actually just to install, you need to make sure that you have uh, matplotlib installed. So this would this says that, that that's the case. You have to do the pip install of box2d. That's the two-dimensional physics simulator that it's based on. And then and then the pip install of the robot sim373. That's the name of the course, the um, uh, science373. Um, and then I do the, the, the upgrade. Um, and so after you have that, that installed, and it just spits out all this stuff, um, then when you do the import, it should tell you what version um, this is. And, and so this is a successful, successful install. Okay, so let's get to the actual out of robot code and, and, and go from there. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to do live coding. Um, I have a few notes that I, that I've written down, but, but mostly I'm just going to be, um, um, just, just typing. So there may be debugging steps. I may have typos uh, that I find along the way and hopefully, um, even that process will be useful to someone that's uh, seeing that. So, so I always do kind of the pilot in line. So that way the plots end up being in the, uh, um, uh, in the notebook from robot sim373 import star and that's the kind of lazy import of there. So, so I'm going to have essentially a, a few functions. I'm going to build a robot, okay, I'll come back to that, and I'm going to have some kind of act function that's called every single millisecond. I think it's, it's called the, the frame rate's about 1 60th of a second, but I might just say every millisecond just to be um, um, kind of quick about it, even though it's not entirely accurate. Um, but the idea is that this act function is called many, many, many times for the, for, for the simulation. And then we're going to build an environment um, of a certain size. And I'll get back to, to, to actually doing the build steps. Um, we're going to attach, we're going to make a robot, attach it to that environment, and then we're going to build that robot. And that's and that's and then we're going to be and then we'll be running um, however we want to. Okay, so let's go back up here to the build build case. So there are only two types of objects in this simulation. Okay, um, and those are boxes and disks, so squares and circles. Um, and so every and then and then so you build up with these boxes and disks, and then you connect them in however you want to. So I'll make one box. I'll attach it to the robot, give it a position in X and Y position. I can, I can be explicit about that. Uh, and it'll have a certain kind of default size and I give it a name and this will become important later, later on. So I'm going to call that one right. And then I'll do the same thing for the left. And I'm going to change this location. And then I'm going to connect those with a connection called weld. And what weld does is weld will, um, okay, so what weld does is weld um, takes two objects and makes it as if they were one object. So, so if, if one of them moves the other, if one of them starts to rotate, the other one has to, has to rotate. So you imagine it as like an invisible cable that, uh, or more like a, an invisible I-beam that's stiff. And if one, when, when one moves, the other one has to move. And these are going to be simulated in a, in a kind of a physical, uh, a physical environment. Um, and so uh, I'm going to make a disc. It's called disc one. I'm going to give it attach it to the robot, give it a position, and I'll call it center. Okay, and then I'm going to connect the disk one to box one with distance instead of weld. And I'm going to do the same thing for two. So what that does is that makes the, um, um, it keeps the relative distance between two objects, but it doesn't, um, uh, if one of them rotates, it doesn't have to, the other one doesn't have to rotate. And so I can spin this one disc without affecting the other, without affecting the, the, the boxes. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the act just doing, doing nothing right now. Um, and I should be able to build that robot and I should be able to run the simulation with um, the environment 
the act function, and then a number of parameters. So total time is equal to, uh, let's say, you know, I'll do, I'll do 10, uh, this would be 10 seconds. The, um, the time for display, this is, becomes important just because of, uh, um, um, you know, this, um, you don't want it displaying every single millisecond because it's the, the display part of it is the part that's actually slow. And that's because of we're using matplotlib for, do, for, for doing this. So, but make this larger for a faster display. Um, and so when I, when I run it, oops, to do, and let's see, where did I get that wrong? I know what I did wrong. Okay, box one. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, so there's our robot. Now my window, had, because I've zoomed in a, a fair amount, is a little bit is a little bit large. So I'm going to do a um, uh, a figure width of let's say I try six just so that it's a little bit there we go all right so time is is clicking along it's not doing anything because the act function doesn't do anything and and that's just the the the, the way it is. so so okay so what can the act function do so we built this robot they're connected in some way um i can apply forces to the uh different pieces so i can say something like you know robot At the left dot f that's the force is equal to let's say 0 0.4 and then do the same thing for the right and just keep those the, those forces going for the entire time and when I do that it moves along all right and I can run it for I can run it for longer if I if I if I wanted to, um, but you know anyway. So so there is also a wall all the way around this um, this environment that you make this the, the size of, um, and so that's the um, that uh, that's the, the the case. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. So that's kind of essentially building the robot, getting it to run, and having a very simple act function. And, and then I will continue this video uh, with another one, which makes this a little bit more complex and starts dealing with sensor uh, values. But um, the, the, you can set the force for any, um, for any part of this. So if I were to say, let's say I, I, I put the, the left at point, point 0.4 and the right at minus point 0.4, um, and then I run it, you'll notice what happens. It starts to spin, and, and uh, no, I can make it spin slower if I just do a, a, a smaller force, right? And then it'll slowly speed up. Um, and so you know, one force is, is, is in one direction, another one. Notice that the, that the disk doesn't actually change orientation during this. So that's because the, it's connected with distance. It just maintains the same distance, but it's not welded together. So this is how we design robot, get it to act, and run the environment. And that's the, 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 the simplest case that, that we, um, we, we can think of. And the next uh, video I will do will be about uh, the sensors on the, um, on, the, on the robot.